for those of you that are popping on, uh, my name is Neil McKenzie. I head up marketing here at Universal, and um, we have a great panel uh, today on um, really the outdoors and um, kind of how that has become the new room in the home um, for, uh, I think, everybody in some form or fashion, certainly if you're going to be entertaining. And um, for us, it's really important, this market as well, because we launched a new outdoor collection with Coastal Living called Coastal Living Outdoor. And um, if you are coming to High Point uh, or are in High Point, uh, please uh, be sure to uh, set up a time to come see it. It's uh, 8,500 square feet, over 100 SKUs, and uh, we're really pleased with, with how it's turned out. So um, we're excited about that. Um, we also have a number of events just like this. Um, mostly virtual uh, due to obviously uh, what is a very different market experience. Um, and those can be found at universalfurniture.com slash market events. And uh, you can feel free to um, opt into any of those. We are recording all of them. So if you can't catch it, uh, we will send you a recording and you can watch that on your own time. And then we're also gonna be bringing you uh, everything that we've done uh, this fall uh, to a virtual market setting on November 16th and 17th. So that'll allow you, if you didn't get to make the trip um, for obvious reasons, um, we'll be able to bring that to you on your time uh, in November. So um, with that, Kristen, I will let you uh, take it away and um, you can just tell me when to flip. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you, Neil. Um, just very briefly, since we are recording this for everyone, um, I'm Kristen Payne. I'm Vice President of Licensing for Coastal Living. Uh, I also work with several other brands at Meredith Corporation. Uh, but I will say that Coastal Living is one of our most exciting brands that we have taken the popularity of a lifestyle magazine that's purely dedicated to life on the coast and on the water um, and been able to so successfully translate that into beautiful product that looks exactly like the pages of the magazine that our editors put together each quarter for us. Um, Coastal Living has been around for um, almost, two, almost two decades and um, it has remained the only brand that is completely exclusive content uh, with life on the water. So it's been um, a beautiful magazine for some time. It reaches a very affluent audience. It is available through subscription or newsstand. Um, and as well as a, a social footprint that touches millions each quarter when we release the magazine. So um, we've seen a lot of brand growth in the last couple of years with Coastal Living, and uh, we continue to roll out new products and new partnerships, which has led us to this wonderful partnership here with Universal. So um, that's just a little bit about Coastal Living. And if you'll go to the next slide, Neil, I'd love to take a moment and introduce our three panelists who've graciously given us their time um, and who represent a wonderful variety from around the United States um, to give us a real breadth um, and insight into trends that we're seeing um, across multitude of, cult of coastal markets. So uh, Vicki, I'm gonna start with you. Um, if you will go to the next slide, Neil. Vicki is the founder and principal designer of Southern Studio Interior Design. She's coming to us live from Cary, North Carolina. Um, and she is, I've personally been through a, a number of her homes as she works for many of our custom builder program members under the Southern Living and Coastal Living brands. And she always uses a very fresh combination of texture, pattern, color, and she's really known for her expertise in a casual sophistication. This works so well for primary homes and for secondary homes and her extensive work in a very luxury high-end real estate construction sector has been featured not only in Coastal Living, but also in Southern Living. Um, Vicki was just recently named the 2020 Designer of the Year by Southern Living through the Design Alliance. So I've known Vicki for a long time. She is a dear person and incredibly talented designer. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to you sharing some insights, Vicki. If you'll go to the next slide, Neil. Thank you, I'd Chris. Like Yes, I'd like to shift now to Los Angeles, uh, where uh, Brigan Jane is a very experienced and accomplished interior designer, a lifestyle blogger, and a Los Angeles mom. Her resume boasts um, enterprises that span the gamut, really from designing creative music studios to managing international real estate projects. She has a full staff, and her design savvy is well sought after by clients in almost every industry. Um, including a double platinum selling recording audit artist who she designed an elaborate home and complete with a tailored wardrobe room, which I would give anything to see that or even have one. 
That's amazing. Uh, Brigan is both a residential and a commercial designer. She focuses on design build, so really starting from uh, the, from the grassroots of every project. Um, she endeavors to use her design skills to work as a creative director and a marketing professional. Um, she also worked for a luxury yacht manufacturer, um, staging yachts and traveling internationally for consultants um, with clientele out of Dubai. So those unique experiences have really set the stage for a fresh voice and exceptional design opportunities, including her most recent work um, with a luxury estate in Bel Air, California. So this is Brig and Jane, and we're very happy to have you. Um, your breadth of work is truly beautiful, Brig, and I'm excited to hear from you today. Thank you, Kristen. Those bios are always funny, but I am a beach girl through and through, I think, uh, born and raised, and then, of course, yachts. So water is what I speak in terms of design. So I'm very grateful to be here with you today. I love that. Wonderful. Well, then I'll wrap it up with your third and final panelist. I feel like I'm on the dating game. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> Catherine Chaplow. Uh, her design aesthetic is really that of a chameleon. She has a signature style that really incorporates layers and often features bold color. Smart, fashionable, and approachable. Her interiors may be traditional or modern, but always include an element of the unexpected. She's inspired by a Southern upbringing, a love of family, the arts, and a passion of her clients. Um, Catherine and her team believe that a good interior design elevates quality of life and celebrates tradition and future all at the same time. She's worked throughout West Michigan, uh, along the lake shores of Northern Michigan. She's worked in Tennessee, New York, Miami, Salt Lake, and she loves the all-encompassing nature of construction and takes a highly collaborative approach, uh, working as closely with a tile installer as she will an architect. And she finds the process to be a constant opportunity for learning and evolution, even after 25 years of practice. So Catherine, welcome and thank you for being a part of the panel. Thank you, it's a privilege. I'm excited to hear what everyone has to say today. Thank you. You bet. Um, Neil, if you'll go to the next slide for us. So we're gonna go ahead and jump straight into our questions. So um, we will take the approach of, I'd love to hear from each of our panelists. So I, I will ask the question and then I'm going to throw it first to Catherine, then to Bregan, and then finally Vicki will let you wrap up each question. So Catherine, I'm gonna start with you with question number one, please. What colors, fabrics, finishes were popular in the first few months of 2020? This does feel a little bit like a game show, doesn't it? it does. <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> in the best way, in the best way. So it was, it's interesting, you know, when we got this question, it feels like the beginning of 2020 was a million years ago because so much has happened this year. But I would say that looking at um, the vacation properties that we work on or second homes that we work on, something that was definitely trending for us and we're not huge, um, we, we tried to really use what we call special sauce in the design of our homes. So personal style is extremely important to me and my team when it comes to design. But something we were seeing was a move away from so much white on white on white, which has been a really strong trend. And um, the use of more personal elements and warmer neutrals, more color, um, definitely an inspired palette that included elements from vintage uh, resort hotels, places like the Grand Hotel on Mackinac Island, um, the Greenbrier. We were seeing those kinds of elements um, being requested by clients. Um, and, and I think just overall a warmer palette rather than that very kind of black and white uh, trend that we've seen for the past few years. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, Bregan, can we ask you the same? What colors, of fabrics, course. and finishes you see and I'm gonna completely echo Catherine here. I was feeling very much the same. The beginning of 2020, we did not know what this year would hold. And I think we were all looking for something new and fresh in colors. So people were leaning into those pops a lot more and they were leaning into the bright pinks and the teals and they wanted to add in that layer and get away from the serenity of a muted color palette. I will say that I've seen things shift right back in to the serenity of a nice color palette with hues that are based in a natural and um, sort of 
nurturing environment, you know, the, even the hues of greens and browns and ocean blues, people are wanting to connect to the outside again. So I think that color palette indeed has shifted back into these beautiful neutrals. And we're seeing that in the metals as well. You know, we're getting away from the blacks and the, the golds and more of these muted chromes. And I'm really enjoying that. That's beautiful. That's interesting about the textures and different materials tempering the color. I had not hadn't thought about that, but we're certainly showing a lot of that in the magazine as well. Uh, Vicki, can I ask you please the same question? I'm <laughs> this is the game show. So we're, <laughs> we are being on the East Coast and, and especially kind of the mid Atlantic and Southern East Coast, we're in a very traditional market. And at the beginning of the year, I think um, we were very much focused on performance fabrics when it comes to that. I mean, very durable. People living on the coast do not want to have to worry about wet bathing suits and sunscreen. And so, and now with all of the variety of performance fabrics, that's been really, really a huge priority for our clients. And as far as color, um, at the beginning of the year, and actually it's been continuing, a lot of our clients really like the colors of the sand and the sea. And so they want the color, the, the warm neutrals of the sea oats. And when they look out the window at the ocean, the, the natural woods and the driftwood colors, even in the finishes of, of their case goods, and then, you know, the sea blue and the, and the greens. And that has been a consistent color palette for our work. Hmm. That's great, thank you. Um, Neil, if you'll take us to the second question, please, on the next slide. We'll go back to bachelorette number one, Catherine. <laughs> um, can we fast forward now to today and what's trending in coastal design, maybe that's being driven by this pandemic? Um, and our clients in particular, because of the pandemic, asking you for something that may be atypical in a beach home. So here in, we're, we're located in West Michigan, I'm based in Grand Rapids, and we have a really unique um, and distinct lakeshore culture here. So a lot of people have um, a vacation or secondary residence along a lake, and it's not necessarily Lake Michigan, which is fantastic, but we have so many lakes um, here in, in Michigan. And I think what people, since um, COVID has hit, uh, and affected the market, what they're really looking for is treating both of their residences like a primary residence. So when they go to visit their lakeshore home, um, they find the same comforts uh, of, um, you know, they, they want the warmth that they have in their primary residence. And I, I feel that there's a shift in designing a bit more for family and less for entertaining and less for guests spending the night. Um, we're definitely seeing a huge uptick in incorporating heating and warming elements in exterior spaces. So fireplaces, use of radiant heaters that can be installed along um, the, the perimeter of a screened in porch, for instance. Being in Michigan, we have a cooler climate um, than, <laughs> you know, Vicki and, and Bregan are, are in a little warmer climates, but we're, we're also seeing uh, package management which has been an interesting um, kind of addendum with, with COVID. A lot of people are having things delivered. And so even at their cottages or vacation homes, there's a real need to manage delivery of packages. Um, so we, we're adding on space on the exterior of homes or within foyers, so secured spaces that can help them to manage a lot of deliveries and also mudroom expansion. So. We're, we've always had a really strong kind of mudroom culture in Michigan with snow and salt, but we're finding a lot of shoe storage, um, moving from closets into entryways. Um, so those were three of the big kind of design elements, I would say, from an architectural standpoint that we've seen impact our designs. That's great, thank you. Uh, Regan, can I ask you the same? Yes. Um, so I think first and foremost, I am seeing updates focused in functionality first. So um, my long clients are, like you said, Catherine, looking for spaces that they can live in as opposed to entertain in. 
Um, a lot of times our LA stage of outdoor living has been just that. It's sort of this moment that doesn't get used daily because there's a lot of you know restaurant and office culture. And so now that everybody's back home, they are really taking those spaces and redesigning them for their own personal needs. Also family, I have seen as a big one, even as college kids return back home and the need for you know, different setups of spaces for different family members. Um, I am also seeing the packages, people are living from their homes. So what they need is different and very stereotypical LA is the gym. So I've been doing a lot of home gyms or outdoor areas where the focus can be, this is where you do your yoga practice. So this is where you stop and do meditation. So I think that's very LA specific here. Um, my clients are Malibu, Palisades, Santa Monica. And what I also enjoy is that they all each have their own coastal personality. Um, but again, those performance fabrics, if they didn't want to sort of spend on the budget there maybe three years ago, there's no question or hesitation now, which is why I love doing things like with Sunbrella or I can really get my client to think about quality and that's really nice. Well, that's great. I hadn't thought about that, the impact of their willingness to now have investment pieces and spend more on the quality because they're personally using it so much more. I love that. That's a great take. Um, Vicky, I get pushback. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I was just echoing. I get less pushback, you know? They finally get it. They're like, oh yes, my home, this thing. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Vicki, I'm going to turn it now to you. So I absolutely echo what Catherine and Bregan said. So many of our families are actually quarantining on the coast. They have the ability to work from home. And I think it was Bregan who said the college students, so many college students. And what Catherine had said about, you know, it used to be in the past that coastal, it was all about entertaining family and friends and, and large groups and sleeping capacity in these beach homes. Now it's more important to have those spaces that somebody can be on the conference call in one room while studying and being on, on online virtual school in another room. And so it's really kind of setting up those spaces that you can have privacy and quiet now. And the home gyms are the one thing that actually caught me a, a bit off guard and a little bit of a surprise. And I did notice that just I just got back from market, right? how many new desks have been introduced at market universal had a whole whole section of of new desks that were were introduced and so um we're just living a little bit differently right now and i think as designers we just need to embrace that and help our clients with this new reality that we're living in it's so true so true um if you'll go to the next slide we um we completely are seeing and echoing uh, what you all have said about the importance of the home office. And it's become not an afterthought, but a real focus. I think a lot of people are living and working, as you all said, from that secondary home, which includes these coastal houses and beach houses and lake houses. So the offices have gone from an afterthought, maybe a charger in the kitchen, to now a fully, fully invested space. And there's some beautiful things coming out of it. Um, and they're also being incorporated into other rooms, like perhaps, you know, almost a living room setting, but there's a dedicated area for a very sophisticated look for um, a desk space. So we're certainly seeing that um, as well as I thought, uh, Catherine, your point of the home deliveries that I, nobody had thought about that. We actually just conducted a study, a, a consumer study in the home space on what they intend to spend their money on during COVID and after COVID as it relates to their homes um, and home offices and dealing with home delivery and clever storage solutions, anything related to storage was top of the list for what they wanted to invest um, to purchase new items to help them manage the clutter that they're seeing every day because they never leave their homes. So that was, um, that was pretty fascinating to us. And on the next slide, uh, what we like to call functioning foyers, um, you guys are all echoing this sentiment as well that it not only has to look great, but there is, there is a purpose and a place to store items. And if packages do come in, they can be concealed so they're not stacked up boxes. 
Um, so we're seeing a resurgence in not only desks, but any kind of uh, piece of furniture that can serve as some sort of um, sophisticated or elevated storage. So this beautiful piece from the collection on the right is one of my favorites. You could put that in a living room, a foyer, or a bedroom, anywhere, but it's a great way with a lot of style to conceal. So um, on the next, we'll go ahead and go to the question number three. Have you had any clients make permanent or semi-permanent moves to their coastal homes because of the pandemic? And do you feel that they want their homes to feel still vacation-y or more like a primary residence? You know, where's the line there today? Um, and I'll go back to Catherine, we'll start back with you. I mean, it's a great question. I think right after the pandemic hit, you know, early 2020, we saw a lot of people whose kids had to be home turning um, turning that into an opportunity to take their kids and uh, treat it almost like, I don't want to call it a vacation, but a little bit like a vacation. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, treating their, their cottages or their lakeshore homes as a place of calm and retreat and peace rather than an isolate, you know, feeling isolated by switching up their location their whole family um, did feel like there was a sense of vacation. And I know all of us are probably sharing the same experiences when we're talking with our clients and with contractors and just our neighbors, that this, the time that we all spent sort of locked up with our kids and with our <laughs> families um, really did have this beautiful silver lining in that it, it, you know, we're cooking together a lot more and we're, spending time in our yards and we're appreciating so much of um, what makes our downtime really meaningful and doing it when we are supposed to be, you know, at work and at school. So while it was, everything was upended, um, I felt like, you know, that, that particular uh, perspective really did give people the opportunity to see their homes, uh, their vacation homes as more of an extension of their primary residence. And so the, the second question about creating more of a vacation at home, I think that happened naturally for a lot of people. I, I know we spent hours and hours and hours in our backyard this year. You know, we put in a little backyard um, kitchenette um, kind of spontaneously because we were spending so much time outside and it was such an easy way to allow our kids to stay outside and um, you know, we kind of had some social bubbling with people we could safely um, entertain in our backyard. So I would say that it's, it's definitely impacted the way people view their homes in general. And I think it's been for the positive. That's great. Uh, Brian, what are you seeing out in your area in West Coast? I am seeing most that people are really interested in how their space affects their serenity. And so that to me has been leaning into more of a relaxed home environment. I think people sh are shifting any rooms that feel very heavy. You know, like this is a beautiful library that we're looking at, but it's warm and inviting and it may not evoke that first thought of vacation, but there is a sense of those coastal teals and those beautiful prints that will affect everyone differently in terms of their spirit. So I'm seeing a lot of honesty breakthrough with my clients because they have to get real. What we do as interior designers is really just intentional curation of the moments you live in. And so I am only as effective as my clients allow me to be in their lives of honesty. So my conversations are getting a lot deeper about like, do you really sit in that chair? What do you really want to do? You know, if we stock our fridge for the diet, we're never going to actually go on. It's <laughs> pointless, right? So I, I'm seeing a lot more personal, uh, just getting in deeper with my clients to really create what makes them feel good on the inside. Um, and that being the primary focus, it's always been our focus as designers, but they're willing to go deep with me right now. That's interesting. I love that. More honesty on how they want to live in that space. That's great. Okay. Um, all right. Vicki, what about in North Carolina? How's the South taking this? 
Well, uh, honestly, people love the, their coastal homes and we have lakes, mountains and beaches here. So we have lots of a variety of, of how people use second homes. But I have to say, I have found this year that it's been a more elevated experience for people in their, beef, uh, in their coastal homes. Instead of spending a weekend there, they're spending weeks, if not months. And so that's, I, I think, why the storage solutions have become such a priority. You're not just taking a duffel bag and having a couple changes of clothes anymore. Mm. And you know now you need now you need to accommodate some warm weather clothes too, which take up take up more space. Um, and same goes for the kitchens. You know, I used to joke about how at the beach house you could get carpal sun tunnel from flipping pancakes in the morning and burgers for dinner, right? And that was kind of because you were entertaining crowds and that's what you did in the summer and you had cocktails. And, and now I feel like people are equip uh, equipping their kitchens um, with more, more product and a more elevated higher end product of, of more of what they would have in their primary residence. And so I think it's across the board. I think people, if they have a Vitamix at home, they want a Vitamix at the coast. I mean, they, they just want the luxuries of their primary residence in their second home, no matter what that might be. And so mm -hmm. I do think the level of quality in our furnishings of second homes is going up. Interesting. Um, we certainly are seeing that the personal spaces, and if you want to jump to the next slide, um, the personal spaces that you all are talking about, they're putting more investment pieces of art. They're, they're looking at furniture that, as you said, Vicki, is you know, no longer Ikea or home goods. They want just as nice pieces in their, in their secondary homes as they do their primary. And so many people, I think, Catherine, you made this point early, early on when we spoke, that the, the spaces are now being thought of as the homeowners versus maybe a rental space. A, a lot of people have properties, multiple properties used for income, um, but even those are starting to look more and more like a personal space with colors and fabrics and things that you identify with as the owner and appreciate versus just something that's easy and quick and doable for a rental. That's a, that's a little bit of a shift that we've seen in a lot of the projects that are actually submitted to us. Um, so I completely agree. And it's, it's great to hear that they're investing in the more longevity you know, pieces for these homes. Um, our fourth question is, has the pan pandemic changed the floor plan? So meaning, does a beach house now, does it need a bigger office? Is the open floor plan being shunned or is it still popular? Is there anything at all you're seeing, since many of you work from, I think all of you actually work from the very beginning of a plan on paper to a finished home and you're very in the construction details. I'd love your take on if the floor plan has changed or not, if you're seeing anything that may be coming in 2021. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Catherine, we'll start back with you, please. Thank you. So I would say it's an interesting, It's I, I think the question about the open floor plan is a really interesting one. I mean, without question, the office is essential. And I think we're finding kind of multiple layers to the office. So there's a layer of school, there's a layer of kind of house or home management office. Um, and then there's also that work from home element. So you have multiple layers that you sort of need to manage and all of it requires quite a bit of flexibility um, I mean, some kids are kind of cycling in and out of school. Some of them have hybrid. We have college students that start at college and then they come home. So um, the integration of technology just in recent years has become more and more important anyway. And I think now more than ever, both in primary and vacation residences, it's really important to um, consider that, especially particularly when you're planning from the very beginning. Um, and laying out your plan, laying out, um, you know, furniture designs, but also when you're working with contractors and subcontractors and considering how you're going to handle wire management, which is a huge pet peeve of mine, bad mm -hmm. wire management. <laughs> and with a lot of technology being kind of like added into spaces, I think that wire management element is a big construction um, concern for, for our team. Um, but the question about the floor plan, we are seeing a lot of people who continue to really embrace an open floor plan, but there are, there is more of a desire to have spaces like libraries 
or um, expanded laundry rooms that might incorporate uh, like a crafting area or a kind of like a mission, you know, control where you have a lot of scheduling happening for families. So there's a laundry room slash office. Uh, so I believe that floor plans are always going to be evolving. And what we're finding really more than anything is that it's just become more personal. I, I mean, I really love what Regan was speaking about when it comes to, you know, really deep diving with your clients and understanding what is, what is their priority? What are their values and what really matters and designing for that instead of just designing for what's popular. Hmm. That's a great point. Uh, Regan, how about you? What are you seeing floor plan wise? Is it different in your market? I, I think what coastal living has always been good at as I've read it over the years is that it's very like, Catherine is saying lifestyle based first. Mm -hmm. It's what's the life that you're creating, not just how pretty is the couch. <laughs> and so I think as Vicky said, like I'm doing a lot of more bars and coffee nooks in the kitchen. They want those <laughs> stations sort of thought out in the layout for plan. Now is anything physically changing? Not a whole lot, but they want those curated elements to know from the beginning. There's nothing more frustrating than designing as a designer and then all these sort of appliances come out on the counter and you're like, I could have hit those away if you just told me you needed a pull-up drawer. So again, I think those are the small changes I'm seeing. Everyone sort of stole their garage and their guest room. I think no matter how big or how small your floor plan was, even in the largest of homes that I'm doing, they still wanted those extra square feet. Mm -hmm. And we regained um, office and gym very quickly by those conversions. A guest room made a great office, a garage made a great gym. I think as people start to build, we will see those things um, happen more with intention from the beginning, but I'm also seeing a lot of layout forgiveness. So a lot of clients right now, when they are wanting to redo their space, they're like, we don't have to move everything. You know how one thing sets off the cities. That's all, you know, so they're like, let's just do new counters for now. We'll deal with this layout because they're living in their spaces and they don't necessarily, no one's traveling as much right now. They want to be home. So they are going somewhat conservative in the remodel. Um, <laughs> It's just interesting to me and I get it because no one wants to live through the craziness of a whole rebuild, I think <laughs> right now, but they also want to refresh. So they're open to smaller changes that make a big impact. Hmm. That's great. I, I'm writing down some of your fabulous phrases. I'm like, honesty and design. Let, <laughs> 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 yeah. Really good, stuff. but I, it's so true. It's so true. I didn't realize with my coffee bar that I have in my kitchen, I live in only like 3,000 square feet. It's tiny. And I have, I had all these people staying with me. My husband was here. I was here. My child was here. I had three sets of parents at one point. I was like, okay, we got a lot of people in here. I didn't realize the traffic jam that happened at my coffee maker. We literally did what you said. We called a designer friend and said, help us. And we moved it, created a place, put in some floor plugs, put some in some bedrooms, which I hadn't even thought of. That was her idea. So they can yeah. get coffee before they even come out here. So it was like a line at Starbucks. And I just didn't think about it. I don't have that many people that live here typically. So I love that. Um, Vicki, what about you? Kristen, can I come stay with you? Girl, you can always come stay with me. Please come stay <laughs> <laughs> so the only thing that I, I, I would echo everything that Catherine and Bregan have already shared, but the only thing that I would add is um, when we're designing from scratch with a home, we are paying extra special attention to outdoor spaces, outdoor living, and it's not just one outdoor living space, it's multiple outdoor living spaces for multiple purposes. And so um, people are even working outdoors, they're cooking outdoors, we're not eating out as much, so outdoor kitchens. And so those outdoor spaces have become one of the number one priorities when we're designing a home. Yeah, I agree. And somebody could make a killing if they'll figure out a way to store all those cushions in yeah. a pretty way. I, I drive by million dollar houses down the street and they've got them stacked up on their back porch and I can see them all that beautiful umbrella fabric just out there crazy 
you know that's absolutely true and honestly the boxes that the storage boxes we yeah. have, well this is interesting and that, that's a whole other conversation because we're on the hunt for one that keeps all the pests and bugs and cobwebs out and and that's not an easy task it's not easy it is not easy nope i ended up storing mine in a beautiful little cooler believe it or not right and that's but the best thing and actually I, you know with the outdoor cushions i mean even like people always want you know sleeping like sleeping porches yeah. and that sort of yeah. thing and and to keep those things clean is is as, here in north carolina we have pollen like crazy so oh. that's, that's a whole other challenge yes there's a there's a lot that is going to come i believe out of design not only for homes but furnishings and fabrics that are going to be related to all of this shift to the outdoor living that we're seeing now. There, there's so many pain points we have as consumers that need to be solved. Correct. Um, okay, I'm gonna go to the final question, you guys, which is what do you think is on the horizon for coastal design in 2021? Um, and I'll go back to Catherine. So this is like the big one, isn't it? It so, is the big one. <laughs> I feel as if our, like, you know, I kept, I, I took a few notes um, before our, our discussion and what I kept coming back to is less perfection and more comfort, less mm -hmm. perfection and more comfort. And people are, I completely agree with what everyone has been saying today in that it's almost like a realization, you know, people are willing to invest more. They're willing to look at it from a more personal perspective, take more time with that, with what really gives you solace, what really comforts your family, what gives you joy, makes you happy, all of those words. Um, and what can we just forgive? Like, let's not make it perfect. Let's not get hung up on making things so perfect, but still elevating, you know, still giving it, um, like let's invest in some really ex special fabric that makes you happy every time you see it hanging at the window. Let's frame that artwork you've had in a folder from your travels in the closet for all these years, you know, that you've been putting off so that you could do X, Y, Z. Um, and I think the other thing that is definitely on the horizon for coastal design specifically is just a less of a vacation treatment of those homes mm -hmm. and using elements like velvet and wool and um, printed <laughs> grass cloths and really like natural earthy elements that some people don't always have front of mind when they think of beach homes or lake houses. They, they tend to think of very fresh palettes. And I think our clients, um, I mean, this is a, a bath on the screen right now that we just recently completed for a lakeshore home. And it has drama and it's dark and it's rich. And it may not be what you would expect for lakeshore, um, but like stained woods, um, just that richer element, I think, is definitely going to be infused into these houses more than we've seen in the past. That's a beautiful bathroom. It's very, very pretty. It reminds me of a super high-end hotel. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Yes, you guys shared some incredible images. And I, I did notice in, in what we put in here that are from your portfolio of work, there's so much in pattern and wallpaper tiles that are incredibly artistic. Um, it looks like there's so much more, uh, to use your point, there's more personality than perfection in, in coming through in a lot of the fixtures, in lighting, in tile, a lot of the wall treatments that I'm seeing. And it's exciting for us as a, as a brand, the things that we're getting are so different. For a while, I, like, I think a lot of magazine editors were receiving kind of the same thing over and over and over. It was the same palette, the same look, and we were looking for something fresh and new. And, and now we've gotten what we had hoped for. Now we're getting inundated with beautiful imagery like this. So it's kind of exciting for us to be able to see the diversity in design that's happening from a brand perspective of what you guys are getting turn loose to really do out there. So, um, okay, Brigid, let's see um, see what you think about what's coming yeah. for Coastal Design. I mean, perfection is always the enemy of progress. And so I totally see that. Like that people have not wanted to hang that painting or not wanted to commit to this. And now they are finally exhaling and going, let's, let's get this done, you know? Um, so I appreciate and see that as well. 
for coastal uh, homes uh, specifically, I think that rental conversation we were having was interesting because I do see a lot more respect in rentals. I see that uh, my homeowners who do have a rental property are no longer hesitating to put the nicer elements in there. And I don't know if it's the deposits that are being taken or just the fact that there's more of this home sharing, but I do think there is an elevated design that's being brought forth from the beginning, even if you know the property is going to be rented. And that most of the renters coming in do have a sense of the respect for the home and are you know enjoying those layers um, instead of being worried that your stuff is going to get ruined. And I think there's a human connection that's happening in the mm -hmm. sharing of spaces because creating new environments is good for the soul. And it's something I think we are all struggling with right now. Um, and then, yeah, I think that one of the things that I've always seen in coastal is that very white, very beachy, we all know it. Um, but I'm seeing more natural elements come in with almost a woodsy sort of <laughs> inspiration. Like I'm seeing that nature is nature. And so coastal is going, oh, there's a whole nother layer of nature at least here in LA, that we don't usually like speak to as much in design, but they're wanting that jungle feel or that mountain feel to, to mold with the coastal feel um, to get you that sort of just being outside experience, even though you're indoors. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited That's for 2021. <laughs> I am too. I think there's going to be some amazing work that comes out of 2021. I think there's, it's going to be fun for us to be able to see what you guys are out there doing and then feature it through our lens. So, um, Vicki, what about you? What about the South? Do you think that's different from what you're hearing from Catherine and from Bregan or echoing similar? I love listening to Catherine and Bregan because I do think that we can kind of cross over elements from different parts of the country. And I think we all learn from each other. And so panels like this just do nothing but inspire me to do better and do more. And so, so thank you for sharing. But I have to say here, I really believe our philosophy has always been that luxury is truly a collection um, of, of collection of items that you've gathered from a life well lived. And so it's gathering from travels and that sort of thing. And, and I think coastal homes are very similar in 2021. And I, I'm going to embrace this, but our client base typically um, does a lot of traveling and that traveling has come to a screeching halt for the most part. Mm -hmm. And so I really think the biggest change we're gonna see is a more detailed and personalized design because I truly believe that homeowners are gonna be much more involved. I think they have time to be involved. I think they're home and they're living in their spaces. They have high expectations of how they want their spaces to function. And so I think embracing that collaboration is gonna take our industry far. And so we're really gearing up for a more collaborative design approach this coming year. That's great, thank you. Um, well, we'll just slip to, that's the end of our questions. You guys are totally off the hook now. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing and wonderful insights. Um, what we're going to wrap up with today is just a glimpse and a little bit of a recap of um, what you guys have said. Um, Neil, I don't know if you have any Q&A that's come in that we need to address. Um, but on the next few slides, while he's looking at Q&A, I will just share that the outdoor living and dining is something that we're very focused on as a brand. And we're very excited about the collection, our very first outdoor collection, which um, these are just images from Coastal Living Magazine speaking to the different ways people design and live outside. Um, but we're very excited to be introducing our own new collection, um, both for indoor upholstery as well as our outdoor, which will be spring 21, but it's the very first time we've ever done it. So uh, we now have two amazing collections. We have Escape, which was our first collection the getaway collection, which is now, and the latest that you're seeing at market today. And then of course we have the over 100 SKUs that Neil referenced in our outdoor, which we're unbelievably excited about. So 
You can see there's a lot in this collection of different wood tones. So really picking up the cues of what you guys have been sharing with us today on natural elements, um, different wood tones, different weaves and looks. Um, the table is one of my favorite um, pieces in this collection. It's a, a beautiful woven with a, a really geometric feel to it. So we've, we've been extremely happy that the very talented design team at Universal has kept us right at and ahead of trends as we release each different collection. I feel like a lot of what you guys have shared today is supported in, in the look and feel that we have on the floor if you're at High Point at the moment. Um, and this of course is just a little tiny sneak peek of some of what's coming for the outdoor collection. Um, but there are many, many more pieces and they have a very clean lined modern look to them that I honestly feel could blend in Vicki with a traditional look if you set traditional pieces with it, or they could certainly hold their own um, at a lake house, Catherine, that you might be doing, or even out on the west, uh, west coast, Regan, where you've got that more modern eclectic feel. So we're incredibly excited for you guys to see this and everyone will be receiving more information on both the current collections as well as the outdoor. So is there, um, Neil, is there any Q&A that we need to address as we wrap this up? Yeah, let me, uh, let me stop sharing my screen so I can see that. Hold on one second. It, it looks like we had one question pop in and if you have a question, you can use the, uh, the chat, uh, the chat uh, button at the bottom. So a question came out about uh, just package management, kind of that that whole concept of being, I know I'd say 80% of the groceries we get now are coming from Whole Foods uh, or Amazon. And, um, you know, I think there's something coming from somewhere every other day, whether it be, you know, uh, you know, your trip to Target or Walmart might be coming to your doorstep. So I think that's a, that's a concept um, that uh, I think there's some interest on and certainly something that some folks are discussing. Um, so I don't know if you guys have any additional thoughts on on that that you'd want to share, uh, just in terms of maybe um, that resonating more with with customers. Someone else. Should go first. <laughs> I'm seeing a need of it. And Vicki, you were talking about needing the storage in the home. I'm also seeing it even before it gets into your home. So it's a lot of the packages on the doorstep. Um, you know, two gate system, something that's easy for a delivery person to drop it off in a space that can be um, sort of, you know, planned out, but then also have the protection against your own front door. So there's a need there too. And I think that those gating systems and those entryways, um, there's a lot more planning going on there as well. Mm -hmm. Same, we've designed outdoor closets that are almost hidden into um, the millwork of the exterior of the home. So that's a great way to just have hidden um, package management. Someone can drop it off. The homeowner can pick it up really easily. Sometimes you can even design that so that it can be picked up from inside the house, but it can be added to an existing home. I, I, I think our belief is the easiest strategy, baskets and benches. If you can just have layer in baskets and benches, that's the simplest solution for what we're, what we're dealing with today. Like I'll say that we added a, we have a lock on the exterior of our mudroom door and it's one of those that you punch a code into or you can open it with your phone. And so we added deadbolts and secured doors to the interior doors. So now that's our drop room. So we actually have people come up on the porch, the code is used or we can open it. They drop the packages inside of this little mudroom, which unless they want to steal my washer and dryer or do some laundry <laughs> and being in there. <laughs> So <laughs> that's become our solution because I have everything delivered, bulk dog food, horse food, you name it. It's all coming to this farm in a truck delivery. So we basically just turned our mudroom because of the lock system and the secure doors we added internally into our little drop zone because I didn't have anywhere else to add it onto. So you get creative. <laughs> Um, yeah, somebody needs to help with the, with the recycling part of it happen faster. That's what we need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, another question that came in. Um, so a question on seeing the new collections and ordering them, which we would love you to do both. Um, so we will have a virtual market November 16th and 17th. And for design customers, you will have the opportunity at that point in time 
to preview um, the new Coast of Living Outdoor uh, introduction and order it, uh, pre-order it online. And then the existing two collections, Escape and Getaway, are both on the website now and available for designers uh, to order through our, our back end. And if there's questions on that, um, you can feel free to just reach out to us or if you go to Universal to the Trade, you can find a, uh, uh, a phone number and an email that uh, can support uh, that conversation to help you out. So we, uh, we're excited to have you uh, purchase it though. So that'd be great. Neil, uh, can I chime in on that collection? Absolutely, Vicki, I, yeah, happen, I, happen, I happen to be in High Point and was able to tour it yesterday. And do you, and this is like the technical side of, of our industry that we have to pay attention to. Of course, it's beautiful. And I, there's so many flexible options and dining tables and dining chairs. And Kristen, like you said, you can layer it in with the traditional and the more contemporary. But you know what? It's the technical side of the quality of construction that really makes a difference for our clients. And the fact that um, I was told it was used all stainless steel hardware, which is the most durable for, for coastal living, the highest quality of teak, powder coated aluminum, all mm -hmm. of those things are the elements that we need on the coast. And so I was so pleasantly surprised at that line. So congratulations, you guys killed it. Thank you, thank you. I know, yeah, the product team is really excited. And uh, I think just what the design team did in terms of showcasing it in the space uh, for us to, we're excited to be in the, in the space and, and kind of truly be a whole home resource for folks. So yeah, we're, we're excited. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed, enjoyed the visit. So fabulous. yeah, thanks for coming. Um, I don't see any other questions. Um, I don't know if there's any last thoughts from anybody. Uh, we will again be making this available uh, via email for those uh, that may have had to hop off early or that weren't able to attend. And we will uh, replay this during our virtual market in November. Kristen, any parting shots? No, <laughs> nothing for me. I just want to reiterate how much I really appreciate um, all three of our amazing panelists for being a part of today's panel. I really appreciate it. And I wrote down three pages of notes. So I, I think there was some great stuff that came out of today. And Neil, to you and your team at Universal, Coastal Living could not be more thrilled with the products that we have with you all. So thank you for really bringing this brand to life for us. Well, we, yeah, it's a, it's a fun one to, to make happen. So we, we appreciate mm -hmm. your involvement and thank you to uh, Vicki, Brigan and Catherine for making time on a Sunday afternoon. So um, mm -hmm. thanks guys. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank, thank you. So much. All right. Take care guys. All right. Bye-bye. Uh